In this video, we'll see how to use variation of parameters to find a particular solution to a second order linear non-homogeneous ODE, which has polynomial coefficients. So given the fundamental solution set, we're given y1 is e to the negative x, y2 is x e to the x. Uh, those are solutions to the homogeneous ODE there. And we want to find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous ODE, where instead of 0 on the right-hand side, we have this exponential times polynomial function. 2x plus 1 squared times e to the negative x. So the idea with variation parameters is that we try for a particular solution of the form of u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2, where u1 and u2 are unknown parameters. All right, those are functions that we're going to find. And y1 and y2 are the given solutions to the homogeneous ODE. So we know what those are. By imposing certain requirement on the derivative of this particular solution, we can actually get a set of two formulas that will give us an algebraic system of equations. So we'll turn this into an algebra problem, a system of two equations where we can solve for u1 prime and u2 prime. We're going to leave out a lot of the details on the, where these formulas come from, but we'll show how to use them. You can find the details in the textbook or the critical thinking. So for this problem, our particular solution is going to be u1, which we don't know, times e to the negative x, that's our y1, plus u2, which we also want to figure out, times x e to the x, that's our y2. So if we just figure out what u1 is and u2 is, we'll put those in there and we'll have our particular solution. So there's two equations we'll use um, to solve for actually for u1 prime and u2 prime, and then we'll integrate to get u1 and u2. So the first equation is given here, u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equals 0. And this comes from when you're taking derivatives of the particular solution, uh, if you don't require these two terms adding to zero, you'll actually end up with second derivatives of u1 and u2, and you would not be able to solve for u1 and u2. So by making this requirement, we're able to solve for u1 and u2. For our particular problem, where y1 is e to the negative x, y2 is x e to the x. So that's our equation. If you do make that requirement and you do take the derivatives of y sub p of the particular solution, a lot of stuff cancels out and you're actually, the ODE itself will turn into this formula. Right? And, and all that work is shown in the book or in the critical thinking and explained there. So you can read through that and uh, understand where those formulas come from. What does this equation look like for our problem? Well, we need to put in the derivatives of y1 and y2 here. So y1 prime is negative e to the negative x, right? Yeah. Chain rule give us a negative. And y2 prime So yeah, we would have to use the product rule. So x e to the x plus 1 e to the x. Right. f is the function on the right-hand side, the forcing function that makes this ODE non-homogeneous. 
In this case, it's 2x plus 1 squared e to the negative x. The right-hand side function is your f of x. And p sub 0 of x is the coefficient in function in front of y double prime. So for this problem, it's the 2x plus 1. Usually you can do some kind of clean up with this formula. In this case, I can factor that e to the x off the second term. And I can have the one of those 2x plus 1s be divided by that denominator. So we actually won't have a fraction here anymore, right? You could do something with these exponentials. You know, multiply everything by e to the x. Get rid of two of them and just give you an e to the 2x. That's something you could do. But you know, we're just going to get to the point now where we're going to go ahead and try to solve this as a system of equations. And so if you find that that's more helpful, you can actually do that in the next step. So you take the simplified equation from step two, you take the simplified equation from step three, and solve those using some of the techniques you would from pre-calculus, right? Usually the substitution method or the addition method. And while I am partial to the substitution method, this one's actually a good candidate for the addition method, right? Because if you were to add these two equations, the uh, first terms are already equal and opposite. No, equal and absolute value, opposite and sign. So the u1 prime e to the negative x would actually be added to that negative u1 prime e to the negative x. So let's just go ahead and add those two equations together. Or, or try to use substitution method and make sure you get the same solution. So what happens if we add the u2 prime terms? Right, well, they both have that e to the x. So you're adding x to x plus 1 gives you 2x plus 1, right? Well, that worked out quite nicely. <laughs> we got a 2x plus 1 on both sides now. So you can divide by 2x plus 1. This obviously limits the value of x. can't be negative 1 half. and uh, makes our equation a little bit simpler. So at this point you can divide both sides by e to the x or equivalently multiply both sides by e to the negative x and get u2 prime is e to the negative 2x. Now you've got to find u1 prime. I'm going to go ahead and use the first equation because it's simpler. And I'm going to substitute in u2 prime. And then I'm going to solve for u1 prime. What's that going to give me? u1 prime e to the negative x. Uh, so we got e to the negative 2x times e to the x. So if we would add those exponents, that would just give us e to the negative x. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 
At this point, you could multiply everything by e to the x to get rid of those exponentials. And so hopefully it's clear that u1 prime is negative x. Just move that term to the other side. So this ends up being an algebraic process to solve for u1 prime and u2 prime. Then we do need to go back to some calculus to find u1 and u2. So we'll just use integration to get those. So if u1 prime is negative x, then u1 is the integral of negative x. What's the integral negative x? Negative x squared over 2. Negative 1 half x squared. We also had an uh, expression for u2 prime. So u2 prime is e to the negative 2x, which means u2 is the integral of e to the negative 2x. What's the integral of e to the negative 2x? Well, it's e to the negative 2x divided by negative 2. So negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. All right, no constants of integration here. So we know what u1 is, we know what u2 is. We want to put it all together. Remember that we wanted the particular solution, and we had an equation where all we needed to do was put in u1 and u2. So let's put it all together here, replacing u1 with negative 1 half x squared. And u2 is negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. And if you can simplify then, you might be able to simplify when you multiply u1 and y1 and u2 and y2. In this case, u2, y2 can be simplified a little, right? Because you've got those exponentials. So those will add exponents, and it'll actually be just e to the negative x. In fact, at this point, you could factor off the e to the negative x itself. So a lot of the problems will just ask for this particular solution. Remember, the general solution actually had uh, c1 times y1 e to the negative x, plus c2 times y2 plus the particular solution, which at this point we can write as negative 1 half, right? They all have negative 1 half. Uh, e to the negative x, they all have e to the negative x. And then just do x squared plus x. So just factoring off the negative 1 half and the e to the negative x. Notice the linear independence here. So we do have an e to the negative x already in the fundamental set, but because of the x and the x squared, these are linearly independent. We also have an x times e to the x, but because e to the x and e to the negative x are linearly independent, this x is actually something different. So those are all unique contributions to the solution. All right. If we were given initial conditions, so say we were told that y of 0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 equals negative 1, we would go find these in the usual way. This would allow us to determine what c1 and c2 are. So use the condition on the solution to get one equation. 
right, when x is 0, y is 1, right? When x is 0, that makes a lot of this stuff go away, right? The exponentials are just 1. Uh, x is 0 makes this whole term 0. And actually makes that whole term 0 as well. So when x is 0, everything is 0 except for c1. And so y being 1 tells you that c1 is 1. Now to find c2, we need to use the other condition. And that's a condition on the derivative. So now you've got to take the derivative of this thing, which isn't exactly pretty. Um, but we've done some of this already. So we won't spend too much time on it. So we have this times the derivative here. Plus that times this. And obviously, we can combine those two into one half e to the negative x, x squared minus x minus one. So I think that's the derivative. All right, let's have the derivative you can put in the other condition which says, oh, when x is 0, y, is y prime is negative 1. So put a negative 1 for the derivative. When x is 0, you get negative 1 here. And you get c2. And this is going to be negative 1 half, right? Because the only thing that's not 0 in there is that negative 1. And this should tell you what c2 is. It tells you c2 is 1 half. So, so you can figure out c1, c2 in the usual way and get the solution can validate it in the usual way as well. Take the solution, take its derivative, take its second derivative, substitute those into the original ODE and see that that works out. I'll leave that to you.